In this video, I will be asking questions about the anatomy of the respiratory system. If you're curious as to what kind of material this video will cover, look in the description. I will have put a word bank. What is the opening to your nose called and the little space just inside the nose? What you would commonly call your nostril is also called your external nares. And just inside your external nares is the nasal vestibule. Then you have these folds and then the space in between the folds. And at the very back of the nose, there's the posterior border. So the folds are the superior, middle, and inferior nasal concha. The space in between the folds are the superior, middle, and inferior nasal meatuses. And the posterior border of the nose, if the front border is the external nares, the posterior border is the internal nares. Alright, so once you're out of the nasal cavity, what is the name of the tube that goes from your nasal cavity to where your food and air separate? And what are the three regions? So the whole thing is the pharynx. Behind the nose is the nasopharynx. Behind the mouth is the oropharynx, and just above the larynx, the laryngopharynx. Alright, now I want you to think what type of tissue are the three regions lined with? The Nasopharynx is lined with ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. The oro and laryngopharynx are lined with stratified squamous epithelium. It's very easy to remember because anywhere you have food, you need stratified squamous because remember stratified has multiple layers. Those multiple layers are going to protect you from the friction of your food. So if it's food and air, you need stratified squamous, but in places where it's only air, like in the nasopharynx, it's ciliated pseudostratified columnar because those cilia are going to move debris out of your nasal passage. What do we call the tube in the back? And in the front, what is this? So this is the esophagus, this, is the larynx. The larynx has a big cartilage in the front and then right below that big cartilage is another cartilage. So the big cartilage is the thyroid cartilage. The smaller cartilage just underneath it is the cricoid cartilage and we'll see that um, represented better on another model but it's just good to keep in mind it's thyroid cartilage underneath is cricoid. And I want you to think what type of cartilage are those made with? So those are hyaline cartilage and what is this thing here? This is a little door that's going to cover the hole of your larynx. 
So this is the epiglottis, and it is made with elastic cartilage because you need that elastic cartilage so that it is flexible and that it can bend down and cover your airway so food does not get in it. All right, so in your pharynx, you have tonsils, which you've probably done your lymphatic system by now. Remember, tonsils are little bits of lymphoid tissue that they have an immune system function. So you have your B cells hanging out in these tonsils just in case you breathe in or you're eating any pathogens. Your B cells have a chance to become exposed to those pathogens. So there's a tonsil here all the way at the back, right behind your nose. And then I want you to think of what's this hole? What is the tonsil outside the hole? And then there's a tonsil here on your tongue. And at the back of your throat, those tonsils that like a lot of people end up getting removed when they're kids. So behind your nose is your pharyngeal tonsil. This opening here is the opening of the auditory tube, sometimes also called the eustachian tube or the pharyngeotympanic tube. The tonsil outside of the auditory tube is the tubal tonsil. On the tongue is the lingual tonsil because lingual means tongue you know like bilingual you speak two languages and on either side of your throat you've got your palatine tonsils because remember that bone in the roof of your mouth is the palatine bone all right so i want to move over to the model of the larynx but before i do i just want to do a little side by side compare and contrast uh, because a lot of the times students will be like kate it doesn't look the same on this model no it does you just have to look at them side by side and then you'll see it so we said this was the thyroid cartilage below it was the cricoid and you're seeing the same thing here a big old thyroid cartilage with the little cricoid cartilage underneath and then this big spoon shaped thing is the epiglottis um, and we didn't mention it before but below the cricoid cartilage this becomes the trachea so you find your thyroid you find your cricoid and then below that you know you must be in the trachea so now we're looking at the larynx in an anterior view. We said this was the thyroid cartilage, this was the cricoid, but what is this? It's not a cartilage, it is the hyoid bone. Now, in between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage is a little ligament to connect them. That is the Cricothyroid ligament. I believe I've also seen it opposite thyrocricoid ligament. Just look at your notes, see what you know your school's telling you. Connecting the cricoid to this tube, which is the trachea, is the cricotracheal ligament. Cricothyroid, cricotracheal. And then connecting this to this is the thyroepiglottic ligament. So these words are actually very easy to remember if you just think it's connecting what to what, that will give you the name. Rotating around from a posterior view, what is this thing? 
that is still just the cricord cartilage. It's just bigger in the back. And then we have two sets of paired cartilages. These guys, uh, which are like little triangles attached to the bigger guys. The little triangles are the corniculate cartilages, and the bigger guys are the arytenoid cartilages. Um, it's silly, but I think corniculate, it's like a little piece of candy corn. Corniculate. We said the big spoon shaped cartilage was the epiglottis because what do we call the hole in between the vocal cords? The glottis. So when the vocal cords are in this position, are they abducted or adducted? And would you be speaking or breathing? So when your vocal cords are together, they are adducted, because remember you're adding something to the midline, and you would be speaking because your vocal cords need to be tight like guitar strings in order to vibrate to make the sound of your voice. When you're breathing, they're abducted because you just want a big hole for the air to pass through. Last question. Everything above the cricoid cartilage is what part of the respiratory tract? What do we call the region? So that is the upper respiratory tract because the upper respiratory tract includes the larynx um, and everything above it, so the pharynx, the sinuses, and the larynx includes the cricoid cartilage. Once you get down into the trachea, now you're in the lower respiratory tract. All right, hope that was helpful. Have a great day and have fun learning.